Welcome back to Ian's Strung Out Guitars. We have carved the neck out, the volute, and thickness the headstock, and did the spalted mango veneer. So she's light. And uh, next we'll do the frets and uh, the finish sanding and everything. And then, yeah, do the finish and put her together. So, yeah, this is how we did it. I'm going to put a decent glute on this here. Uh, everything's down to one inch. I wasn't thinking about it before. Joe, you didn't remind me. I could have just cut it on the, uh, I could cut a little bit on the bandsaw, but I can only get to where the horn is because the horn sticks out more on it. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. I would have saved a little bit of time. Purple heart's so hard. That's why it, I would have had most of this already carved down if it was uh, just mahogany. Next time I'll have Julia uh, hold the camera so I can show you how to do this uh, or how I do it. Now I have a center line marked, uh, which is the exact center of the neck. I have everything down to about one inch, which uh, I, again, I, if I was thinking or I had Joe to tell me, I would have went ahead and cut it with a bandsaw first, but it's all right. It's not a big deal. Um, so what you want to do is go to the first fret that you have there and yeah, just get one of the bendy kind of rulers and uh, go from where your first fret is you can see that and make a mark on either side and then you want to go ahead and I want to join those okay and then down here at the 12th fret you have a mark goes up from the fret the twelfth and uh right there a line there and there and you wanna across. Okay now right here you wanna uh go about five mil um five mil over
to get your calipers and set them to five millimeters and then yeah, push a dot in there on either side of your center line. Okay, so yeah. Don't mark it there and there. Okay. Now uh you wanna set it at ten millimeters here. And uh, sometimes the old manual ones are better than the digital ones. Mine die all the time. Uh and then do the same thing at the twelfth fret, and then at ten millimeters. And then you want to join those lines up. Yeah, you can do it with a marker. Uh, you can do it with a pencil. It doesn't matter. Just so you can see it. It's not going to be there forever. Uh, it's not going to be there that long at all. Okay, now, uh, you want to measure the side of your neck, and you want to go about two-thirds, so whatever, is, whatever you have here, the first right there, yeah, 22 mil, so you want to go uh, two-thirds, so about 14 33, so roughly there, and then you want to make your mark there, and do the same down at the 12th fret, and join that line up. Now I'll need a smaller ruler, but then we'll, uh, I'll get something uh, that will fit right there. I'll draw the line from there and then file over and start filing. Okay, I actually put tape on it. So we're one, or I'm sorry, we're two thirds of the neck here and two thirds of the neck here in the first fret and at the 12th fret, neither one. And essentially, what we're doing is called uh, fussing and we're going to uh, take any heavy rasp I have a Shinto here I have some really nice uh, files that Jules got me uh, and you want to go from this line you can you don't have to be gentle you can go from this line to that line where the tape is and just haul all of it out and that's uh yeah that's basically it and i'll show you the next step afterwards Once you get into the purple heart, you know it, it's uh, going to be fun to carve Joe's neck, I'll tell you what. Mahogany and maple are really, really nice to work with. Some things like purple heart, they're uh, really beautiful, but they're really hard. Now that we have to this line to, you know, two thirds of it knocked off and to the uh, five mil there and 10 mil there, uh, you're gonna take your draw knife or 
spout or whatever and then just bring this down. Okay, now that we have essentially a triangle kind of, which uh, a lot of people that lust after the old 60s strats, a lot of them kind of had a neck like that. So, um, anyway, we're going to go from this line here to the center line. Uh, we'll worry about shaping up here where the volute is at the headstock later, but right now, we just want to go from the line right to the center line. Now that we have like multiple faucets, we have one here, we have one here, and we have one here, and then of course you have the ones on the edges, and then we have one there, uh, you just start to round them over. Um, now if you want a fatter neck, you know, like some of the older, you know, like a, a, a big 2x4, like the 59 Les Pauls, um, then, you know, you don't want to take too much off of there, or if you want like any of the early strats, you know, you might want the V shape, but you just start to take them down, and as you take those edges off, you pretty much have shaped the neck. It's, then it's just, uh, if you have a, you know, a contour gauge and you have a neck that you particularly like and you want to clone it uh, you know of course just use it and you know measure it uh, but that's uh, pretty much it uh, you know keep an eye on what you're doing see how thin you want the neck how thin the person wants the neck what it, how big their hands are and all that you know what they feel comfortable with uh, but yeah just work it down And last, we'll work the edges down, and uh, I'll shape the headstock. I started to do the heel, but all right. The headstock is pretty much shaped. I need to take it down at just like a millimeter, or you know, maybe two. You don't want to go too much. A average headstock's about uh, fifteen, and I got some hip shot. Uh, you can see them in there. Okay, got some. Hip shot open uh, locking containers. So generally, they're staggered, which means the uh, six one from top, this one's taller, all the way to the last one, they get shorter. That's actually that was actually done because of Fender, uh, the way Fender headstocks were made. So it was made so yeah, you don't necessarily need the string trees. So uh, anyway. Uh, they're uh, looking at them. They're of anywhere from 14 to 15. So to put a cover on top of this or a you know cap, I need to uh, take it down a few, well about a millimeter, maybe two. Again, you don't want to go too far. Um, and that's what the uh, oscillating spindle sander is great for. But um, so yeah, uh, I'll put the top over that. And here's the back of the neck, which is shaping up nicely, and the volute, I still have some work to do on that, and uh, some on the neck, but it's coming off. Here's the nerve-wracking part. <laughs>
carve the volute right, it actually works as a great stop. The next completely almost shaped headstocks, right? I just need to trim around the volute just a little. I gotta keep the grinder on though. If you're wondering what that is because even with these uh, very nice Iwasaki fowls, they seem to uh, just, the purple heart gets stuck in them. Never before have I had so much problem with the wood. It's hard as hell. Somebody's going to ask, do you need a volute on this? No, probably not. This is extremely hard, but it looks cool. <laughs>
Well, here is the uh, finished product. It's got a really cool looking glute. It's uh, the neck is a slim taper, kind of like the old uh, like the old Jacksons from the '90s. Got to put the side dot inlays in, and there's the headstock. Sorry, that was dust. I thought it was a mark too, but nah. I need to wipe all the dust off. So that's about 14 hours of neck shaping. <laughs>